Okay, we're going to look at another one of these trigonometric functions. In this case, we have one of those weird ones, a cotangent one. So we're going to look at it. I also just use variables. So we're not going to get a numerical answer. We're not going to actually be able to solve x. And that's why I didn't define a range for this one. Because we're just going to get a general solution in terms of a and b, which again, would be placeholders for numbers. It's the same basic math, just because it's variables. Actually, if anything, it's going to make it easier. Because we don't actually have to solve for x. Like, we're just going to get it in terms of a and b, and that would be placeholder until you defined a range and what a and b are. Great. So what do we got? Well, on the left hand side we have a fraction. We have one, and all that is over cotangent of 3x, and added to that is a. So one over, and everything underneath is cotangent 3x plus a. And that's all equal to b. Great. Well, we don't want 1 over, and if we wanted to, we can multiply both sides by this whole thing on the bottom, this cotangent 3x plus a, multiply both sides, but then we'd have to divide both sides by b. It's much easier just to flip both sides. Again, as always, we can think this is the same as b over 1. Flip both sides and get cotangent of 3x, that's plus a, equals 1 over b. Great. We want to get the 3x on its own. Right now, what do we got to eliminate? The plus a. So, minus a from both sides. And what we have is cotangent 3x equals 1 minus b minus a. 1 over b minus a. Great. Well, what do we do now? Cotangent, again, we don't work with cotangent. We saw, we've said that before, don't work cotangent. So we convert it to tan. But that's the same as saying 1 over tan of 3x. Remember, the part in bracket stays the same. Cotangent becomes tan, you put 1 over it, and that part in bracket stays the same. And of course, the right-hand side also remains the same. Now, last time we looked at inverting, if we did that, we'd have to combine the a and b term. Plus, I think it's worth just showing both types of ways of solving. In this case, we're going to multiply both sides by tan over 3x. What we could have done here, and if we wanted to, we could combine these and then invert it. Whatever we prefer. Try both. See which one you like. So, in this case, I'm going to multiply both sides by tan 3x. Ooh, I'm going to switch markers again. Tan. 3x, multiplying both sides to cancel it on this side. Great. So I got 1 equals this mess over here. 1 over b minus a, which again I could combine if I really wanted to, times tan of 3x. Well, I don't want that with this other term, so I'm actually going to now divide 1 by this entire term. Divide both sides by this term in brackets. 1 over b minus a. Both sides get that treatment. That looks messy, but eh, it's easy when you can erase things. Great. These will cancel. And we're left with this idea. 1 divided by this whole term. One, ooh. 1 over b minus a, and that's all equal to tan of 3x. And sure, again, we don't have numbers. Otherwise, this would simplify down. We just probably have a number on this side. But we still follow the same basic procedure. We're going to do tan to the minus 1. Whew. These markers are not liking me. Tan to the minus 1 on both sides. So we're going to actually continue it over here, I think. I'm going to jump to this part on the board. And I'm going to have still on this side. Tan to the minus 1 of this rather ugly mess. You know what? Switching markers one more time because they're not liking me at all. So tan to the minus 1 of 1 over 
1 over b minus a. And that's all equal to 3x. So finally, we can say tan to the minus 1. 1 over 1 minus, 1 over b minus a equals x as long as this is all divided by 3. So if I really want to put it all in line, I'd probably write it like this. Looks messy. That's because we haven't introduced the numbers yet. If we knew what A and B were, we could just calculate this out. Take the tan inverse before we, or take the tan to the minus 1 of this entire term before we divide by 3, and we get a numerical answer. So, really, that is the end of the problem.